So let's take stock first. Let's look back at the five years of Emmanuel Macron. How is the French economy doing and what are the key challenges for whoever wins this presidential election? Now, whoever wins will be facing basically three major problems. One is public finance, because every single candidate has promised basically to increase public transfers, to support purchasing power, to cut taxes, to invest more in energy transition, in manufacturing, in security, in healthcare, in education, whatever. And it's not balanced. We start from a very large budget deficit. And at some stage, you know, there are fiscal rules in Europe that have been suspended during COVID and now during the war in Ukraine. They will be put back in place at some stage of the future. So the next candidate will have to uh, cut the deficits and and every every single of the candidates has promised just the opposite uh, to keep spending more and to keep cutting taxes. So there will be a huge problem of credibility also of the candidates who are on public finance. Second issue is education. Being a, a big, big, very interestingly, it's big, something has been very much discussed during the campaign. We know that the uh, uh, the performance, the quality of the French education system is very bad, especially in sciences, in math. Uh, this is very well. There's been a big piece by French uh, employers saying that they says something should be done extremely rapidly about the competencies in sciences of the young French, of the kids. Bringing and, talent into the uh, talents yeah, for yeah, the and, 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 and especially manufacturing is very much in trouble. You know, they have in, incredible hiring difficulties because only 20% of the young French graduates in sciences is 45% of the young Germans. So we have a big problem with the quality of the education system. Uh, and it's something all candidates want to address. It will be a very important issue. That's number two. And number three, it's, it's purchasing power. I mean, uh, we, uh, during, during the five years of Macron, I mean, the real income of the French has increased, actually. But things are very different now. I mean, because we have energy prices, which are skyrocketing, we have food prices, we have housing prices. And so we know that, the, let's say, the 20 percent poorest French are in a very, very complicated situation. I mean, uh, uh, you, you know that if you take this 20 percent poorest French, they spend 80 percent of their income on three items, which are food, energy and housing. This is um, incredible. I mean, uh, and so this would be the three major issues for the next five years. I mean, public finance, education and income and, and prices. And so because of cost of living has been at the heart mm. of this campaign and it, Marine Le Pen has placed her campaign a lot on mm. this topic, a little bit away from immigration, like she used to, mm. we know the role of Eric Zemmour on this. So she's kind of benefiting from this. Yeah. From what you see in her, in her economic program, uh, does she bring some solution to these issues? Because it seems to appeal to some voters. But from what you see on paper uh, and compared to other programs, which of the candidates is bringing some solution to this? The, the, the problem is how, how do you do that? I mean, basically, there is a problem with... with, with uh, uh, inflation and, and, and real incomes and, 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 and poverty increasing for a number of the French. Now, how do you solve that? So, uh, possibility number one is what most of the candidates, apart from Macron, basically have argued, which is higher wages. But higher wages, uh, it's not that easy. We have a problem with competitiveness. You know, we have an enormous, uh, you, you showed Les Echo telling that manufacturing was improving. But at the same time, we have a, uh, the trend now is France has uh, an external deficit for manufacturing of 10 billion euros a month. And it's whining very, very fast. So it's not really true that manufacturing is, is improving. I mean, uh, yeah, at least if you look at trade. And so, uh, there's no big room, I mean, to increase wages. I mean, it will harm competitiveness. A second possibility is to use the budget, so to, to increase public transfers to the poorest. This is what we do already this year to offset the increase in energy prices. But then you, you hit the limit, which is the capability to spend more on the budget. And as I said before, there is no capacity to. So it's, it's extremely complicated. I think there will be an extraordinary contradiction between the needs to improve public finance, the needs to uh, improve competitiveness and to improve manufacturing, uh, and, and the fact that uh, the French want, yes, they want more purchasing power, they want higher wages, and they want, uh, and, and they want to live better. And, and uh, honestly, there is no simple solution. And so Le Pen, for instance, uh, well, she spends a lot of public money. 
uh, on uh, increasing wages, on cutting taxes, on uh, supporting a number of, of, of people. But uh, uh, calculations, I mean, all, all the institutes have been doing shows that she ends up with a budget deficit that stays above 7% of GDP through the five years, which is impossible. And, and the next thing, of course, is that rates are moving up already. So we won't be in this very easy situation Macron was in the last three years with zero rates. It's already 1.2, might be 2 or 3 percent very rapidly. So, of course, uh, monetary policy also will play in a very adverse way. And adding to all this, of course, there's huge uncertainty with the war in Ukraine, the mm. sanctions and the impact potentially we've seen inflation going up. But mm. you said the real inflation is around the corner and actually about to hit us. We haven't seen the worst of it yeah. yet. So how, how do we manage this Like for, for the next candidate, for the next person elected? What's at stake here? Well, again, you've got uh, different ways in Europe. If you look at uh, most of countries, just let uh, uh, energy prices move up. Uh, so French decided differently. As you know, there is a cap on electricity and natural gas prices, and there's been a decrease in gasoline prices, which is, of course, financed by, by, by the budget, uh, financed by public money. So today it's costing more than one point of GDP already. I mean, and if, 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 if uh, Europe stops importing natural gas from Europe, I mean, gas prices might double in Europe. And then you will end up with having to spend like two points of GDP if you want, uh, if you want to stabilize energy prices. So, of course, again, if we had an infinite capability of running a very big budget deficit, what, what we had in the last few years, I mean, with again, no, no, no European fiscal rules uh, there, with the ECB financing everything at zero percent, you could do that. You could just uh, cap energy prices, uh, give more to the poorest French, uh, 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 increase, uh, increase the wages of the civil servants, which is something uh, a lot of candidates are arguing for. But again, sir, we have enormous fiscal constraints that will reappear, and this is really what's a very big problem for the next president. But Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.